at staying with security. A university lecturer says, until the communications network among bandit warlords is cut off, defeating banditry in Nigeria may not be feasible. Motal Arufai, who has conducted extensive research on banditry in the country, worries that there is a yawning gap in efforts to curb banditry. Sifo Nisien has more. But the government needs to study very closely. Murutala Rufai is a lecturer at the Usman Damkudyo University, Sokoto. The historian has done extensive research on banditry in Nigeria. He is attending this forum in Abuja that has brought together government officials from states in the northeast and northwest to share knowledge on how to curb the security challenges in the country. Top on the list of security issues are insurgency and banditry. As a student of history, I can tell you that there are a lot of bandit families in the northwestern Nigeria that have been operating for over 60, 70 years. And with the emergence of modern banditry in 2011, for instance, we've seen these families actually transforming into the modern act of banditry. There are quite a number of bandits that need to be absolutely and completely wiped out. And also there are those that need to be talked to and they were listed. And there are also those that are into the act because they were forced to be into it. And also there are a lot of communities as we speak that are quote and unquote supported banditry because they are, they are living under the regime of force. He worries that there are gaps in the government's efforts to tackle the security challenges. So it is a basic fact that they have a system. They have a command structure. They have a system in which they communicate and relate with each other. And that system of communication, unless that system of communication is broken, unless that synergy and relationship between these bandits, for instance, are absolutely broken and dealt with decisively, we cannot see the end of this problem. But the forum believes the Borno model presents a viable method for curbing violent extremism through a non-kinetic approach. Yeah, it will, it will work because these people are known. They are known. And uh, just like what the governor said, the drivers uh, of this uh, insurgency must be addressed. And that in the, in the case of banditry, that, that could be addressed because most, there are some that surrender among them. Therefore, we must, they are our children, we must accept them back and we must make use of them so that others will surrender, just as we are doing in Borneo states. And I believe strongly that if we agree on some common things that we no longer want violence, we no longer want this, we are going to end it. The resources to end it is there. The knowledge, the skills, the expertise to end this thing, whole thing is there. All that has happened in the Northeast in terms of dealing with defectors, in terms of working with women and children affected by the conflict, in terms of all the policy decisions, initiatives, and structures that have been created, would to a very large extent benefit the Northwest so that they probably don't repeat some of the difficult challenges that the Northeast, particularly Borno State, have faced. The Borno model is a community-driven initiative that uses dialogue to persuade Boko Haram and ISWAP fighters to lay down their arms and embrace peace. The goal is for governments or state in the Northwest to borrow a leaf from the Borno State model of peace building. Sifon Isien. TVC News, Abuja.